This is Off Planet Radio. Hey everybody, welcome to Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The website is offplanetradio.com. And uh, this is kind of a return to roots program for me today because late, lately the focus has not been on the UFO scene largely because ufology in the United States is absolutely trashed right now by the extent of bullshit that's being spread around. That said, there is legitimate news out there. There are things going on and there are um, legitimate to topics to discuss. And to that end, I have with us a very special guest. He has not been with us in over four years, much to my chagrin, we find out. We, we talk a lot. We share data. But we really haven't. We haven't done a show. And so I want to welcome back to the show. You haven't heard of him in four years. You haven't gone back through the archives. My man, Tony Topping, is here. And we're going to go into the whole issue of contact, the cost of contact, what's really going on. We're going to touch on um, some of the stuff about regarding Tom DeLonge and his To the Stars organization, as well as the peripheral stuff that's been going on for months now with uh, the, the the circus at Gaia TV and Corey Good. Tony, hey, brother, welcome back to the oh. show. Oh, hello, Randy. Thank you. Well, thank you very much from across the pond for uh, for having me on. I haven't actually read on purpose uh, any of Corey Good's material or sure. Tom's material. Uh, I think the reason for that is to give a contrast to the uh, to the audience, so that the, the listener has a uh, has a contrast. So I'm uh, contrast. So I'm not kind of. Um, tainted in in any way kind of thing what they hear they hear from the horse's mouth i'm a yorkshire man so we us guys from yorkshire in the uk normally just like to tell it how it is really and that's what we love about you tony you pour it out before we go any further uh, i'm i'm on your website i hope it's the one that you're currently using but it's tony topping dot wordpress dot com is that correct that's the one, yeah. That's it's just having cool. undergoing a revamp just at the moment, but there's the biography on it and uh, and a couple of other things and the latest footage and uh, crazy stuff happening, uh, Randy, including a panicked man from the German government on the phone to me, allegedly. Uh, the busiest hazard of all in my line of work, the busy, biggest hazard of all is fantasists, delusional people who think they work for the government, uh, emails pretending to be people from the government. Uh, quite an occupational hazard. Um, you, you wouldn't have thought so, but it, but it is. Um, and there's stuff going on that's deeply shocking and deeply troubling to all men and women in Western society and in America uh, regarding this subject. Uh, it, it's deeply troubling what I'm seeing. And, of course, there is the situation where uh, contact experiences like myself – our experiences bear absolutely no resemblance to what we're reading or seeing on the internet. Yeah. The nearest match I get is guys in Russia and Sweden um, who are having similar experiences to me, especially in Sweden. There's a, group, a contact group in Sweden uh, that has um, experiences uh, with Nordic ETs um, like I have had. Um, and it's just fascinating to have a dialogue with them because, like they say, what they're seeing is also entirely different to what they're being read, read about on the Internet. Um, I think the nearest thing I got to, to seeing all this was an image of, um, I think, this guy, Corey, who's uh, got Nordic uh, with the kind of the Nordic thing. And he's got this image of this, um, I think it's something to do with Nordic extraterrestrials and disclosure uh, and working with religious leaders. There's an image of the Nordic stood there um, and a religious leader stood there. And uh, it just doesn't really, that's, the, that's what I've seen, just that image. The image says it all because my contact with Nordics and the guy in Sweden's contact with Nordics entirely differs uh, and in fact the the route to disclosure is also entirely different to what is being written about as well these ets are very clever uh, and they're not uh, without their agendas and their bad behavior and unethical conduct as well exactly. uh, yeah so i've come face to face with all that over the years uh, since i last spoke to you i've certainly grown and matured uh, since i last uh, spoke to you so Maybe what we do is is first let's let's define a couple of things, Tony. You've been on the scene for many years, talking, writing, and speaking at length about your experiences. You actually get to film and view a, a fair number 
of UFO yeah. sightings, even even just you know, on your in your day to day life. It's not like your UFO hunter yes. out there looking for it. It's no. just you seem to have the good fortune to be able to capture these things. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, indeed, Randy. I think it's a case of actually, it is actually a case of uh, don't wish you might get it because I certainly got it. Uh, I had it since the age of two. I'm just coming to terms with an incident that happened to me at age two, which is in fact a full on, full blown contact uh, scenario that happened to me at age two. But in my previous talks, I just I just dismissed it as some kind of vision. Uh, that I had at age two and of course that's dismissed as the false memory syndrome and all that kind of thing but uh, it was actually it's actually a full-blown kind of Hindu vision that happened to me at age two um, and it, it, it means something you see um, so that that incident happened uh, there's been some other disturbing incidents that have also happened similar to like a science fiction movie um this may be because of uh the unusual situation i find myself in and of course the contact experiencer is faced with a continual elusiveness and vagueness uh, from the ETs. They're not coming in with the information that they should be coming in with. There's a bit of vagary going on. Well, there's a lot of vagary going on, really. And we're not sure what the agenda is that they're working to. But I know uh, from my experiences, there's been some over the skies here of my town, for example, the, the, the air force that's been turning up. Um, and only the other day, for example, I filmed a UFO around about six in the morning. She came over. Uh, in her craft, I say her uh, because there's a, there's a lot to deal with. There's a lot to put up with, Randy, uh, and it's kind of like putting it all in perspective as to where we're going in the in the future. I think uh, we're definitely being warned by them. Uh, we definitely are being warned by them, and this is a skew to all that we're being told about disclosure happening and all that kind of thing. There's a narrative. There's a separate narrative running differently to everything I've read about on the Internet. This includes the liaison with the Nordic ETs. Nordic ETs do not turn up at a religious leader's doorstep and say, we want to disclose to you. They work across a space-time continuum environment, and a lot of people don't really know that, but they do. They've even said it. Some of the things these things have said to me coming over the, the house in the UFOs, uh, the reasons why they're here, all that kind of thing. I just have to be careful what I say, because there are forces out there, Randy, uh, that aren't for the intention of good of mankind. And there's a very disturbing, I'll just say this to the listeners, there's a very disturbing uh, lapel badge uh, out there. There's a friend of mine on Facebook, he collects these operational badges. There's one, for example, uh, operational flashes, either, I don't know, what these insignia that the army I've guys seen, wear. Yeah, I've Flash seen a bunch of these. Yeah. You've seen a bunch yeah. of them, so you know what I'm on about. There's one of them that says something like uh, Nellis, blah, 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 Las Vegas, Nevada. What's the picture of an alien? What goes on in Nellis or whatever stays there, uh, stays in Nellis? That's very disturbing. That's very disturbing for anybody who's in a democratic society and, and is freedom-loving to see that badge there with the what goes on. It's just disturbing. Um, and so there's been a number of incidents that have happened to me. There's been a supernatural incident that happened to me uh, that I couldn't work out. Uh, there's been... You probably haven't caught up with me since we last spoke, but I think it was about a year later when I had this symbolic vision uh, come to me from the Nordic ETs. This symbolic vision was because I was going to film a TV program uh, for Channel 4. I have to say, Randy, that in my 40 years of dealing with all this, uh, I am currently, currently as I speak, completely and utterly out of my depth with it. Uh, due to incidents that have happened with these things that are coming in with the UFOs over the house, uh, I have to step back and just say I'm, I'm, I'm completely out of my depth with it now. I'm dealing with people who are smarter than me, people who look different to me but aren't, that we occupy the same spiritual uh, space, and there's a Hindu Sanskrit flavour to what they do, um, and it creates quite a fascinating mix. My name is not up in lights. I don't have thousands of followers. I've not, I've not written a book yet. Everybody's screaming for me to do that. I am targeted individual as well. The oppression and secrecy uh, behind it is disturbing. Very disturbing indeed. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, TI activity because I know that's something that you've communicated to me, even though we haven't voice to voice talked or interviewed in these last four years. And I know you've been communicating that in certain ways that you have, in fact, been targeted intensely. Who's targeting you 
Is it terrestrial? Is it uh, extraterrestrial, extra dimensional? What's the source of your targeting as you understand it, it and the nature of it? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the, obviously, the um, one of the occupational hazards, or what you're not told when you contact them, uh, when you have contact with ET, what you're not told is the the minimal support that they will give you uh, in protection of you. Um, yeah. And the yes, kind of, I do actually know, brother. <laughs> you do. You know, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I do. This, yeah, this 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 kind of um, you know herald the space brothers here they come aren't they brilliant? Well, they're not. They're not brilliant. In fact, they have their own agendas. Uh, they have their own military. They have their own judiciary, and they will just walk into your life and walk out again and completely wreck it. Um, a few weeks ago, I was put at tremendous risk uh, by an incident, an ET incident that happened, uh, where my blood pressure, according to them, went through the bloody roof. And you wouldn't believe it, Randy, but I've got two ETs. Uh, speaking in English about my blood pressure going through the roof. Now, the question you've got to ask yourself, me being a Yorkshireman that I am, is, is it ET or is it some kind of very bizarre advanced military experimentation going on? Uh, it's a combination of the two, actually. Um, and, and the thing is, is, of course, if they're communicating across a space-time continuum, the result of the interaction of time uh, is collapsed. Therefore, you're heard right across the board. Um, and a good example of that is just looking on YouTube where you see pictures from the future. You've got kind of this this kind of signaling system going on across a space-time continuum where what's happening is um, they're trying to catch whatever agency it is is trying to catch a glimpse of them um, these aliens coming into continuum and out again now the thing is is this causes according to the people in the UFO which is something I've coined it, it causes the Sanskrit phrase, phrase yasmat yasmat meaning uh, causal nature of meaning uh, what we do we reap kind of thing um, and it, it, I call it the Yasmat Paradox. This happened in an incident after uh, about a year later, uh, one Saturday morning, where I had this tremendous vision of a, of a bridge being built um, towards me. And, so, and, and what can only be described as an alien walking across this bridge who looked very similar to us, but wasn't quite looking like us. And they said, uh, and they just said this single word, Yasmat and then disappeared again. And I had to look that up on the internet, and it's Sanskrit for uh, Yasmat, what we sow, we reap. It's also, um, as I understand it, Randy, some links to German bloodline and German royalty, which is extremely bizarre, because only a few weeks ago I had the most bizarre incident with what appeared to be German officialdom on my telephone. It was the most bizarre thing. And I've met some fantasies in my time, but this guy... It was something else, and I'll go into that story. Uh, maybe it's a, a pivotal story of, of what's actually going on. It might take the reader because there's a whole uh, plethora of information surrounding it. There was a German researcher, as I understand it, German guy, I've forgotten his name, who also had a call from a German official, them in quotes, uh, asking questions about his UFO contacts, uh, contact experiences, uh, I think that's something I'd just like to cover for the listener, Randy, if you don't mind, if you would just like me to go. And I think it sets the, the perspective. Ahead. So what, what happened is, is that I give a... I've had, a, just as a background for your listeners, uh, I've had these experiences since the age of two. Um, I went to uh, drama school in London, but before I went to drama school, my first UFO experience was in 92, where I had what the equivalent of a UFO, similar to close encounters of the third kind, coming in over the house and vanishing in the space of approximately, I counted it, 32 seconds. But that 32 seconds, I was wandering around for quite a few weeks, wondering what the bloody hell had hit me. Cut a long story short, these UFOs in 1996 started appearing uh, over where I was staying in a place called St. Mary Cray, Kent, at tremendous speed, and so on and so forth, until I returned back to Selby in about 96 to discover that, that they appeared over the house again. And that's when I started having these strange targeting going on. The targeting began after I actually filmed a UFO in 1999 coming in over the house. It, uh, it was illuminating a television antenna. 
on there'll be four approximately four incidences from 1999 to this point now where the ufos purposely and intentionally illuminate a tv antenna in fact what they did what they did uh, last year i think it was or was it this year is they purposely illuminated my ham radio antenna so what they did randy is they flew uh, they flew in over the garden low it's a female pilot um she flew in over the garden and illuminated the ham radio antenna by morphing literally change the ufo change shape it flies through the antenna flies out the other side of it again and uh, expands and the thing is is that i'm gonna when i get my documentary off the ground which i will do uh, i want that antenna analyzing the metal the metal of it i want mm. it analyzing just to see if the structure has altered of it in any way because they yeah. don't do things yeah. like that, yeah? so it, i'm a ham radio guy it's a comet hf antenna that's what it did and then um, a bit later on, we had the scenario, as I say, of the of the uh, of the air force deciding to have a, a major uh, exercise uh, over the town. Uh, it was unbelievable. And every not a day doesn't go by, Randy, when we've got the air force in the field near me. Uh, the field is connected to a vision that I had in about 2015, which was delivered by the Nordics. During the course of my experiences, there's been a constant vagueness as to who these people behind the UFOs were. But in about 2014, 2015, they re one, of the, one of these parties revealed themselves as to who they were and what they looked like. And what they did is they presented this tremendous vision in my sleep of these two triangle craft in the field near me and these two clocks one at five to twelve one at quarter to twelve indicating doomsday countdown and then they had this the symbol of the avatar uh, you know the, the 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 avatar symbol flashing and this guy this nordic guy he was speaking to somebody but i have no idea who because he turned the volume down i couldn't hear what he's saying but he was speaking to someone Specifically, I believe that he was speaking to somebody across the time continuum, actually. He was speaking to somebody um, about this. And then from that point onwards, we had the Air Force have a major air exercise um, and all that kind of thing. Um, and the air for, and, and hardly enough, uh, the German Air Force have been over here as well on exercise, flying over the fields uh, where these UFOs um, have been filmed. In fact, only the other day, Randy, I actually filmed a UFO. I'll tell you the story about that uh, in a minute but i filmed the ufo at about 6 10 in the morning near the area where these jets have been flying uh, a few weeks back the jets were over the house again practicing their raf typhoon fighters they were practicing dog fights over the estate and all of a sudden uh, my friend jason he ran some analysis on the film footage i took sure enough triangle ufo is is in the background there but the pilots obviously didn't see it so what you're getting is tv antenna uh, this constant theme of communication you're an intelligent fellow randy i bet you can guess where it's going you've also got an incident with a uav that happened last summer uh with me or was it this summer can't quite remember randy it was maybe last <laughs> summer or this summer but basically we had this uav coming in this drone over the house backwards and forwards for about a week or so and then one day uh i would I, I filmed it and then i played back the footage to discover that this UFO had literally photobombed it, as it were, on the footage at tremendous speed. It came in from nowhere and went near it and then flew off again at speed. So what you're getting is communication theme, demonstration of technology theme, communication in the form of a warning to government. These are the three things that are that are going on. I don't think anybody's uh, shaking the hand of religious uh, leaders, and this resulted in a very panicked... He said he was an official from the German government on the phone to me uh, after I gave a talk, and he was quite, what's the word? He wasn't, uh, he wasn't calm. I could feel that he was panicking about something. And what he, he was kind of agitated, about. would we say? Agitated, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I think, he was agitated because it was kind of like a, who the F in hell are you? Mm -hmm. We've never seen you before on our radar. Uh, I want to talk to you kind of thing. But what happened was, 
um, I gave a talk at the UFO Academy in Watford, um, a very good talk it was as well, and I'd come up with some new themes, and some of these themes were about the visions that these ETs behind the UFOs had given. Uh, these visions are of a nuclear theme. It's not necessarily setting stone, but they are of a, a nuclear theme, so we've got warning, as I say, communication, scientific base. Uh, communication of aerodynamic demonstrations in flight. For example, a friend of mine in Worthing took a filmed an Apache helicopter. It got photo bombed by a UFO again. This UFO just came straight up to it and went away from it. What you've got, Randy, is I think over the over over the skies above in in Yorkshire, UK, and in Britain, there is an attempt by these um, civilizations at communication. I think they're opening communication channels. Um, the question is, is how do our kind of military or air force react to that? Uh, but I think that is what's going on for some reason. Um, so I think you can see from the narrative that I'm coming out with that this is the real life narrative as compared with what is written on the um, on the net. They will only disclose scientific information at the pace humanity goes at no faster. Nobody at all is disclosing anything currently at the moment, Randy. No government, not the American government um, or, or the UK government is disclosing anything to do with UFOs. They're not think... only not, well, they're not only not disclosing it. What they've done is they've now salted the entire field with a bunch of false narratives that are gaining yeah. substantial audiences. These are entertainment franchises. They're not disclosure yes. outlets. And yes, so what that's, passes that's for ufology now is, is nothing more than the type of productions you would see on the History Channel, Ancient Aliens, and all of these other commercial yes. outlets. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's... That, that, that well, is, guys that, like that, you, that. well, guys like you... And again, your counterparts here in the U.S., because it's going on here, but it's not being talked about, are engaging in real time, real visual, actual visceral contact with both the craft and the beings. That's right. That's absolutely right. That, that is absolutely correct. What, what got him going, this German guy, Randy, was the fact that... The vision that, that we had, the, the vision that I had was of these two triangle craft, the clocks and all that kind of thing. But I had two further incidents with the, with the Nordic. Uh, I haven't seen him for a number of months, actually, this guy who's a Nordic ET. Um, but he's there. And they have always said to me that just because we're not here does not mean to say we're not watching over you. I am watched over. I'm lucky to be alive. I don't think I'd be here now to tell the tale if it wasn't for them, Randy. One of the incidents that happened was at Christmas um, of last year. Um, I'm a carer for my mother. And this story is in the public domain. I'm a carer for my mother. and uh, I'd gone down with flu. Um, and I couldn't get respite care for her. All the carers had also gone down ill, and I'm wondering how the bloody hell I'm going to look after her. It's Christmas time, and uh, I said to my mother on this Saturday afternoon, uh, I need to get some rest, Mum. Uh, I'm feeling unwell. I can't go. I need to just go and lay down. And bless her, she said, yeah, okay, son. And I goes upstairs, and I lay on the bed, Randy. And um, I am actually... I can hear myself going delirious with fever and the room spins and uh, I'm running a fever. Can't get it down. I've had it for over a week and I'm worried about myself. At this point, I'm, I'm really worried about myself. And I remember passing out in the room. Next minute I know there's a knock at the door in, in dreamscape, in dream time, as it were, just a knock at the door. And I goes downstairs in this dream time environment to answer it. And this Nordic guy stood there and he says hello to me. Always seems to happen on a Saturday with them. Uh, I don't know why. It's quite funny that, it, that they come and turn up on a Saturday. They all seem to turn up on Saturdays for some reason, um, which is darkly comical. Anyway, so um, he's there stood at the door and <laughs> um, he's wearing. Sorry? I said it is actually kind of funny. It, it is. Yeah, you can. Uh, every. <laughs> Over the past over the past years, uh, every Saturday afternoon or every Saturday morning, they've just turned up and just said hello and then gone on their way again. There was a bizarre incident that happened the other day in the living room where I'm sat without my shirt on and I am sipping a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And it was on that morning that I'd actually filmed the UFO round about um, 6.15 a.m. on that morning and filmed the UFO. I know that the pilot is... 
the pilot is female. Uh, I know that she does not look human at all. Um, she's been tracking me for years, watching over me for years, and obviously they're making uh, efforts to speak to me. Now, um, what happened was, Randy, no word of a lies, I'm sat having my dinner. I sip a, a cup of Yorkshire tea. I've not got my shirt on. All of a sudden, I hear this uh, in the room. My mother didn't hear it, but I hear it. This... Um, can I touch you, female voice? And then I felt a finger, Randy, just run down my chest. And it had a very freaky effect on me, did that? Mm. Because I knew it was her, and I knew I knew that she was there, and I knew that she'd, she'd, she'd kind of like run the, uh, run the finger down my chest. Um, so I know that we've got this contact liaison going on. I know that we've got this flow of information happening. And at the end of the day, Randy, there's a guy in Mexico, you know, he's a professor, quite an eminent professor, who sent an email to me. Um, and he said to me, uh, look, I, I strongly believe, in fact, I know, I don't know he knew, but he, he knew that I was having contact with the people behind the UFOs. Can you give me um, any information, he said, about those Andromedans from the, from the Nordic Andromedan? I'd like some scientific information from them on this subject and that subject and the other subject. What is sad about it, Randy, is that um, I'm having contact with them, but he isn't having contact with them. But as I said to him, if he was to have contact with them, and this is the tragedy, and they started to feed him information, that man would be targeted by MK Ultra Mind Control from unknown sources. His life will be made hell, yeah, as it was mine. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and 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 it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And the thing is, is that you've got Tom, whatever his name is, his surname, and and Tom the other DeLong. guy, Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong. And then you've got you've got Mr. Good. I've not read any of his work. Um, having no idea that you as a contact experiencer can be harassed by gunfire, you can be harassed by a lot, you can have the most disturbing and shocking MK Ultra mind control hurled at you because there is an unwritten law, Randy, and I'm very angry at this, an unwritten law that states you as a public individual, you as a citizen, are not allowed to have contact with them. And they, they, have, um, they have saved my bacon over the years uh, on numerous occasions and this guy as I say back to the dreamscape he stood at the door and he's got this flying suit on with this insignia that uh, on his on his chest like a flying insignia blonde blue eyed guy next minute I know we hear the kind of the familiar of the of the craft of the drone taking off taking a, it's taken me because it, it's in parallel with the with the Brazilian UFO incident where a guy was taken by Nordics you know and he's uh, he left an imprint on the bed sheet that has happened to me mm -hmm. but that's fascinating in mm -hmm. itself um, you might be familiar with that incident actually um, so he texts me off next minute I know I'm taken Randy to the Ribblehead viaduct uh, and uh, there's a famous viaduct bridge up in Harrogate, near Harrogate, roughly, kind of up there, settled Cardiff, with Kalaiwe. Um And I remember him standing with me, and he looks up at this structure and he says, Tony, that is a magnificent structure. That was his exact words, that it's a magnificent structure. Next minute I know, two hours have elapsed, I'm back in the room, and within a few hours I was feeling better again, and the next day I was fully functional. Um, and it's just fascinating around how uh, how it just all uh, meshes together. Um, at the moment, I've not seen him for a while, but he's around. The, the, they're always around. They're never far away because of the undemocratic, uh, very nasty, dirty little business uh, that goes on behind the scenes with, uh, with with UFOs. I'm sure you get me on that. I don't want to expand further on it. Yeah, yeah you, you know, you yeah. raise an interesting point here, and this needs to yeah. this needs to be said. People that have contact experiences, whether you call them abductions or contacts, it's a thin line between it. But I was recently in a conference in Houston where I had a chance to do a panel with um, three other UFO contactees, survivor people, one of whom was Travis Walton. I don't know if you know. Yes. Are you familiar with Travis? I'm familiar and, with Travis. Never met him, but familiar, yeah. The Travis is a great guy. And, you know... At talking in that panel and then later on talking to these gentlemen, specifically to Travis Walton, I came to realize the marker of true contactees, they're haunted by their experience. They absolutely, yes. Travis Walton, yes. in all the years, and we're talking almost 40 years, has yes. not shaken that. No. He has the look on his face when he talks about yes. it. You look at it and you just go, 
that is the look of an authentic contactee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right, Matty. Uh, it, you're just you're just traumatized by it, and then on top of that, you've got these these guys. Uh, let us say, some are in the intelligence services, some are not. Um, and you've got, for example, this German guy who phoned me, and he rang me up uh, because he'd heard my UFO talk at Watford. Um, I'd had previously, uh, before I gave the talk, I'd had some very disturbing visions uh, in sleep. And the problem with that is the ethical, the ethics of these aliens is disgusting because you're exposed to something that you do not understand. I've, I know for a fact that they have ethical rows among them all about human beings, alien contact, them in the UFOs, us as human beings, the ethics of it all. And it was very disturbing. In fact, at the talk I gave, I had to throttle it all back so as not to disturb the audience because it was visions uh, of a future and it was not good. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that the, the AT that did that had no consideration at all for me Actually, none at all. Just went ahead and did it. It affected me a great deal. Uh, we had another situation occur where the ET presented herself again and put me at tremendous stress levels because, you know, Randy, um, as, as Travis may, may say, when you meet these ET, these people behind the UFOs, you're shocked. You are shocked because you're not conditioned in our current paradigm to accept it. You're told that we are not alone in the universe. When you come face to face with them, it's a bit of a shocker and you're out of your depth with them because they're smart. Uh, but there's, that, that does not necessarily mean to say that they understand ethics or fr human freedom or, or anything like that at all. They just seem to walk into your life and just cause a, a great deal of chaos. And this causes a conflict among them. And, and what is strange, my observation about them is this is there some sort of cold war going on among them? You have the alien equivalent of Russia and the alien equivalent of NATO out there mm -hmm. in this big... There's, there's definitely yeah. something akin to, to that going on with them. Definitely. Yeah, well, a lot think, of us who are beginning to refer to it as Star Wars, just because that's yes. an easy thing to hang on it. It's yeah. very obvious yeah. that there are factions involved. There are factions yes. that are, let us just say, predisposed to be a bit more kind yeah. to the human than yeah. some of the others who are just vulgar yes. but nevertheless it's very apparent that there are factions of ETs that are warring and yes. the question then becomes what's the prize what's the battle plan and yes. how in the hell did we wind up in the middle of you guys war Yes, and, 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 and in fact uh, in fact Randy um, I actually think that it's not that <sighs> Humanity is in the middle of something that there's something going on that for my own safety I cannot talk about but it shocked me and I was told by them uh, and there's another issue as well going on um, that I was told by them as well which was equally equally shocking um, to do with um, more or less saying don't you kid yourself son we have our hands full with people using our technology who kind of like shouldn't really be having access to our advanced technology who are people of our kind do you follow me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, on that theme now it's kind of like very interesting because you've got that going on and what you seem to have is this kind of like i believe that i'm dealing with or witnessing some type of alien police, some type of alien judicial type thing out. And when uh, uh, we are all for at least our Skype yeah. kinda collapsed there for a minute. Sorry. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. It cleaned up again. Yeah, so so the, the, they seem to be doing they seem to be doing this for a reason. It's for a strategic reason that they're doing so much activity at the moment over this town anyway. They're pointing to something, they're hinting at something. And as a result of giving my talk and coming out with this, this symbolic vision that I had, um the phone goes, Randy, one afternoon, Tuesday afternoon I think it was, German guy on the end of it called Klaus, private number, says uh, says you know, uh, Mr Topping, uh, I represent uh what, what did he represent? He represented the security of the constitution of, German, of the German Republic. He represented the German the part of the German defense intelligence, and um, he um, he was very interested in uh, in what I had to say. He'd seen my talk at the UFO Academy. He said, uh, "Not only that, I've no idea how he got my number. 
Uh, and not only that, what was darkly hilarious was he said, we're above this place in Frankfurt, it's our cover office, look us up. Which was the most bizarre and surrealist mm. um, thing I, I have heard, frankly. It was just surreal. So then he, he kind of like went on the theme of, I want to know about your UFOs, I want to know about uh, what you're not talking about is what I want to know about, he says. And I said to him, uh, listen, matey, even if you were God Almighty, I, I said, have my own, I'm like a one-man agency, I have my own security kind of stamp. If I say something secret and I don't talk about it, I can't talk about it, even even to you. So it doesn't, I said, I'm using the old national security agency adage, which is, regardless of rank, if you're not allowed to know, we're not going to tell you. And what could I possibly want from you, I said, because I have everything I need, so I don't need anything from you, which always gets them every time. And, and the conversation bizarrely concluded with no no gain, really, uh, Randy, no gain from him. He put the phone down and went on his way. I should have recorded it. I didn't. Um, I should have kept him talking. I didn't. But to me, it shows a complete and utter lack of respect to have a private number just phone you out of the blue with some guy saying, oh, I'm from intelligence, can you spill your guts out about this subject, is just disrespectful from what I have been through. The, the, a week later, the phone went again on Sunday night, 10 o'clock Sunday night, this time, different-sounding German guy on the phone asking, wanting to know again. And I just cut him off, because it's utterly disrespectful. It shows no respect at all. Um, and I'm annoyed about that. Uh, and rightly so, uh, because I'm seeing very bizarre things going on behind the scenes, and it's getting me quite annoyed, frankly, really annoyed with it all. Um, and I don't quite know where it's um, where it's all going currently at the moment, Randy. I, do, I just don't quite know where it's all going, but it seems to be trucking on towards a scenario of, of contact with these things that are coming in over the house um, that are talking to me and are concerned about things. Um, it's worrying me a great deal, really. So the, the, I guess the, the big joke in all of this is here we are in the U.S. We're celebrating a 90s uh, pop band rock star guy who says that he has some inside information largely as a result of his background and contact with uncertain tele intelligence agency assets. The intelligence agency assets wind up looking to me like the same cast of characters that have been running ufology for the last 40 to 50 years. And on top of that, we're told that we are going to have disclosure through much like the uh, the famous uh, public hearings that they had here in the U.S. a few years ago, uh, uh, which was a joke as well, because they, they proposed nothing that was not already on the record. Most of it was 50-year-old evidence. It, it seems to me like they're almost on a fishing expedition to find genuine experiencers, to pry the clamshell open and to find out the things that apparently they're not even in the loop to know themselves. Yes, you're a very perceptive man, Randy. That's exactly what's going on. So I'm currently in a loop, an information loop that they don't even know about, that they want to know about, uh, but I'm guided. So it's very difficult for some of these geezers to turn up and go, hey, we're, we're from the secret covert agency, blah, 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 because these things coming over the house whisper sweet nothings in my ear and tell me what's what and what isn't but because it's a spiritual thing with me it's a spiritual thing uh it's an immense spiritual journey and for some reason i'm i'm guided through it and what is interesting randy this is what i failed to mention i knew i'd forgotten something this german guy what he was really really getting jumpy about was the artificial intelligence components of the nordic ufo craft these triangles randy i had an incident um a few years back about two years ago i think it was where persistently um for about a period of two weeks i knew that i wasn't speaking to the guys in the craft i was speaking to the craft mm -hmm. this triangle craft had a, had a mind of its own. Mm -hmm. It was like something out of um, a science fiction movie, but it can be assured, and really it's quite traumatizing, actually, on reflection. The, the, the voice of a machine, very kind, very nice, but it was a machine, and it was the triangle that was speaking to me. And it was asking questions, the most bizarre, surrealist questions it was asking. Um, it was interested in 
for example, if I wanted to turn something off to conserve power for the environment, it was interested in that. It was interested in uh, in cosmological, in my spiritual cosmological link to the wider universe. It was probably doing a lot more than that. Um, I understand that they use these triangles for data gathering. They're immense data gathering machines. They've got a mind of their own. I'm probably not even skimming the surface as to what actually went on compared to what I'm describing, but it happened. Um, and um, it was interesting to say the least. Um, it really, it really was. So this German guy was asking, was I aboard the craft? What did the craft look like? It was artificially intelligent. Can you tell me more about that? According to the narrative that we're seeing, uh, we're meant to have super mega advanced machines already uh, that are artificially intelligent. But he was very, very, very concerned about that bit. That what the impression I was getting was that these super duper uh, agencies, um, uh, well, these agencies that weren't in the loop, did not quite have the technology. Uh, to have artificially intelligent thinking craft that could be adopted uh, for space and sea that could also have the capability, as I was told, um, to track the crew. If they got lost, it would come looking for them, uh, that type of thing. Uh, and according to the to the Nordics, according to the Nordics, what they're telling me, their technology is actually doing that, is quite dated for them, they were now, saying. Now, did you, say, did you just say that the, the craft travel in space and sea is that what you said yeah that's right Ma yeah marine space capable so what, what you're okay that, that's a really important thing you just said there based on things that we've talked about or i've talked about on the show my understanding yes, that, about space how, capable, yeah. how uh, basically essentially linking to oceanic portals and going into deep space so i i just wanted to park that there i don't know if you want to go into that at yeah, all okay. or not Yes, this, this is this is this is absolutely uh, this is absolutely correct, and the fact that it's artificially intelligent and can go after its crew should it need to, um, and the fact that um, that within the we're talking in the realm of sci-fi, but we're now saying that within the environment of the space-time continuum, it doesn't matter uh, what time you're in. Uh, if you are humanity, you are as one in whatever time you're in. You're an intelligent guy, Randy. You get exactly what I'm saying, and I think our listeners yeah. do. Yeah. Because all contact and disclosure happens in a space-time continuum. Exactly. It yes. 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 It, it does not happen in terms of the government opening up its door. It doesn't happen in terms of, I've not met the guy, I'm sure he's very nice, the, the, the rock star guy doing his thing. It doesn't happen like that at all in real life. And... Because of what we do now, we affect the future, as in a yasmatic paradox, uh, an agency gets lucky and it starts communication with them and they start to disclose their, their information, which is confusing because the disclosure narrative is 100 years. If we're looking at a time continuum, uh, we're about 125 years off. Um, if we're looking at it from the environment of a time continuum. Now, I don't say that in public uh, sometimes because I don't think it would be appreciated, but I think with you and your listeners, what in I'm saying In which direction are we off? Are we behind or are we're behind? Sorry, say again, Randy. Oh, I, oh, I, I said, there? yeah, yeah, I said, uh, which way are, are we are we behind in terms of the, that, that clock, that 120 years? Are we uh, behind we're, we're that? back. We're back. We're definitely back. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what we, I would have we, guessed. We yeah, we, we, I think we're, we're definitely um, we're 125 years back uh, from from that. So we kind of like uh, yeah, so before so it's so it's 125 years approximately forward. Well, that's a very interesting time, time in itself. Grasp. Sorry, say again, Randy. I said that's a very interesting time itself because that puts us back into the very late 1800s there's some interesting things going on historically back there in terms of uh yes some craft that were being spotted in that era as well there was advanced yes, technology that, that, that is right you, you're also getting time traveler incidents in 1900 mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. uh, because you're in a time continuing environment you see uh, and what, what what will happen is that they I call it up signal line. So what you've got is kind of like a um, a future a future Earth that is in communication with them and now and just grasping their science and technology. This is separate to 
uh, the situation that you might have where uh, Eisenhower met the aliens and it all went a bit deep black and they uh, they did their thing, you know, and all that kind of thing. That's a separate issue altogether, one that raises uh, concern, I feel. Um, and so, of course, what you've got is that environment with what happened in, with Eisenhower and uh, MJ and the stuff all going underground, uh, and that secret is, is going to be kept from the public, isn't it? So what you've got is you will have this kind of rock star guy or whoever it is uh, saying that disclosure is happening when in fact it isn't when in fact nothing's happening at all they, 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 they're they not disclosing anything full stop and they don't intend to either um and that's kind of like a, a, you know it, it's the way it is isn't it i think boy i have so many questions i don't even know where to begin so um just just bouncing off the top of my head first off do you have the sense that the Nordics themselves are, let's just say, at least neutral in terms of favorable. Yeah, I, I get being the favorable to humanity as a whole. Yes, I, I get the impression that they are. Uh, the reason for this is a spiritual thing. Uh, I get the impression that uh, there is a situation going on uh, whereby the Nordics are similar to the police. That they are, uh, they're kind of there is a, a legality, there is a judiciary yeah. about them. Yeah. Uh, they, they're, they're like this, there's something going on like the space equivalent of the United Nations out there. There's, there's something going on whereby. If you think you can do something or because you're alien, um, you have to think again because these guys are smart and these guys, um, I get the impression it's like um, for my own sanity because it's been horrendous with the MK Ultra stuff. They've saved my sanity on numerous occasions. Uh, they've come in, uh, they've told me a bit about what's going on, but they, more importantly, they've let their presence be known that they're here, kind of thing. As a result of that, Randy, the uh, the Air Force have been scrambling over the fields here and coming in and going out again and so on and so forth. It's been quite comical, but it's very serious. Um, it, it, one wonders why they don't just get on with it, uh, the Nordics, and turn up at one of our air bases and show people around the craft they may as well do for the time. Well, well, my question to you is why Yorkshire? Why is that such a hot spot? Is Do you think oh, that, yeah. that may be a vortex? Yeah, what it what it could be, uh, uh, Randy could it could be to do with it might not just be me. Uh, it, there could be other people in the town, and there could be other people in the UK, Sweden, America. It's not necessarily evolving around me, uh, but what could happen? It's similar to that Amazon program. What's it called? Where they're all telepathic but linked to each other. Oh, um, oh, 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 oh um, are you talking about Sensei? Sense8, yeah, it's similar yes. to Sense8. It is definitely similar to Sense8. If you can imagine some kind of universal architecture uh, intelligent being just suddenly, randomly takes someone at random and shakes their hand and says hello for a split second and off again, that crosses into I a space actually, actually, you're using a, a parallel that we've we've talked about on this show numerous really? times. Okay. Yeah, I, I've, there is a connection that goes on there with is a people. Right. Yeah. I, I get the impression, and I could be wrong, but I get the impression that that is the issue that's occurred whereby suddenly at random, could happen to anyone, it happened to me, it might happen to somebody else, where suddenly your hand is shook, your shoulder's touched by it, just for a split second, and off again, for reasons unknown, but it's heard across the space-time continuum by forces unknown, and then you, you start to be trapped because you're carrying the higher celestial spark within you for reasons unknown mm -hmm. you have become a walking paranormal mystery to aliens you have been that's how i see it and some human beings are like that it would appear i could be wrong i've said it before well, in the you, public, you, you make an interesting point there because essentially yeah. contact experience occurs outside of normal space time anyway uh, and anybody who's indeed. a contactee however they express that understands yes. the experience itself is it's not even surreal it is it is a non-ordinary experience on a temporal physical and spiritual level yes it is yes it is and the fact that you're in a, a space-time continuing environment the fact that it's esoteric the fact that you still have secret societies and interests 
uh, still looking into it uh, in the years ahead, uh, also has a bearing on what is impacted on the contactee, and it can get very noisy. Mm. It can get very noisy because I think uh, fewer chosen and, and fewer chosen still, uh, you see. So it, it, whatever they're after or why they're here is still not fully explained to me, uh, Randy. Uh, but needless to say, it's on that kind of it's on that kind of theme. It's as if humanity itself is somehow linked to the higher celestial and we're rare the same as the nordic they yeah. have a link to the yeah. to the higher celestial I agree. Uh, I agree. it would appear it's a rare thing in the universe to have that kind of thing no 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 here's uh, another here's another aspect anything which we observe we change by the act of observation it's a, a basic tenet of quantum physics yeah. is the very act that they are observing that they are interacting means that They've already stepped across the line, so to speak, in terms of their interactions affecting the destiny of both the individuals and as a result of that, the collective as a whole. Yeah, you're, you're a very, you're, you're probably one of only few people, um, who, you've summed that up better than I could, uh, Randy, actually. Uh, you got it. Yeah. I mean, my sense it of is, it, my it, sense of it is that there's a rhyme yeah. and a reason to it somewhere. I mean, what I remember they, they about never... my childhood contacts was that um, it was very much you know, a child doesn't have language to define spirituality. They simply exist in it. So the purest essence expression of that is largely the contact that occurs when you don't have comparative language and all of these structures that we build around us to compare things to, it's the purest type of experience. Whether it's an intrusion or not, it's another issue completely, and we could argue that. But I would say that that, that, that experience vibrationally affects, it has a cascade effect, because it changes who that person is forever. They're never the same. Anybody that's a, contact so, chi a childhood contactee knows their life will never be the same. It's just like Travis Walden, yourself, anybody else that's had these experiences. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely uh, that's absolutely right, uh, Randy. I don't know from one day to the next what's going to happen next with them. Uh, I don't know uh, from one day to the next. I, I really, really don't. I just know I'm lucky to be alive. I know that there was an incident about two years ago um, when I came face to face with, let us say, uh, John Milton, or, or you know the um, you know the Devil Advocate, the guy. I don't know if you saw the Pacino movie. Uh, the Devil's Advocate, where uh, yeah, he owns a, a yeah. large. You're familiar with it? it? It's the film with Al Pacino. And yes, Keanu I, yeah, Reeves. I've seen that movie now that you mention it, yes. You've seen that movie, yeah. yeah. Well, let's just say it was a, an incident like that. In one of my lectures, I describe it as being an incident because of. My certain abilities that that, that that appear to be present in me um, are noted, and um, I was told about a scenario that was going on. I was told not to go anywhere near it with this ability. Uh, if I was to do that, um, I probably I'd just get my brains blown out uh, by him. Uh, and it was uh, indeed the head of uh, you know the head of Dark Force Earth PLC. He'd come to visit, um, and that was an extraordinary moment, Randy. I'll just say it was an extraordinary moment. I do not do drugs. Um, I wasn't high on drugs. All I can say, it was like celestial me witnessing that. And I felt the deepest sorrow. I felt absolutely sorry for it. Even though it was mega powerful, it builds up this empire. You you hear of biblical incidents about, about this entity and all that kind of thing. I felt sorry because it, for it because it was in its own prison. And I feel that it had developed its own artificial intelligence capability to keep going. It was fallen. It was one hell of an incident. Um, it was a most unpleasant incident, I hasten to add. But as the as the alien said to the New Zealand contactee, Alec Newwald, in the most underrated remark ever made by an alien, she said this, this alien called Xena, who met the Alec Newwald driving down the road to Auckland, vanishes 14 days, uh, suddenly awakes again uh, to discover that he's not where he should be. He's about mm -hmm. 20 miles off. Mm -hmm. 14 days have elapsed. You, you know of Alec Newwald, yes? Yes, yes, I am. Um, I know you with that. Yeah, yeah, you do. So 
what happens is the alien that spoke to him said that the Earth is ruled by a dark force uh, that should be respected. It's been around for a very long time. And how right she was. Because you, when, you're, when you're having an incident with something like that, you have to respect it. And you have to know uh, when to quit while you're ahead and just step back because you can't heal the world. You're, nobody's on the white charger coming to save you. Uh, you've just got to respect what you're saying gracefully. Just say, okay, yeah, okay, thank you very much. Uh, and, and, you know, whatever God's gifts has given you, um, I just felt sorry. I felt very sad. Uh, I'm probably one of the few who maybe feel sad for such a thing, but I, I felt that uh, because of what I witnessed. And it was uh, the most bizarre incident. It was biblical. It was unbelievable. Um, I still can't get my head around it, Randy. Mm. <sighs> to have that kind of interaction, uh, numerous interactions um, that, that I can't now simply keep up with because I don't know why I'm having them. So I can't simply, I don't know, and that's maybe the right thing from a psychological perspective, that might be quite healthy actually, that um, I'm out of my depth with it and I have no idea why I'm having them and I'm not going to make any grandiose statements uh, about why I'm having them either, I'm just on a quest um, just to find out more. But it actually happened. Uh, that was about three years ago. And um, it threatened to do me in, I'm lucky to be alive, I am lucky to be alive. Uh, but you've never seen anything like it when these uh, when these craft come over the house with the occupants. I know when they're here. Uh, I know when they're speaking to me. They could wake me up at any time. They could even actually, Randy, wake me up at four in the morning and tell me to go outside and film them. Mm -hmm. It's that the liaison is there, present. Um, and yet, as I say, I get upset because you see these guys in the media doing their disclosure thing and uh, aliens and UFOs, and then there's us lot up in the UK, and some of us are having it hellish times really difficult times with it all you know so i thank you for your support you know well you know i i seem to have about me uh, a, a group of people comprised largely of people with paranormal experiences targeted individuals yeah. survivors of government mind control programs such as mk ultra this is these are my people and yes you've drawn a lot of commonality here in terms of the targeting, um, do you get the sense that you're, you are at greater risk as a result of these beings or that these beings are shielding you from what would be even worse repercussions? They're, they're shielding me from what will be even worse uh, repercussions, it would appear. They've told me a number of things uh, that I can't repeat, but they've told me a number of things that indicate clearly to me that I am a man caught up in a scenario that I have no understanding of, and it's for that reason um, that they're here. There's an ethical reason behind it. They're also not happy uh, with some of the MK Ultra stuff that's going on at a very advanced level on the human collective consciousness. They're not happy with that at all. Um, I, think, I get the impression that it's not for that to be done with. The human mind is a sacred thing. And they're telling me that with some of them, uh, for example, some of the women, some of the alien women that I've seen are very Hindu in look, striking, Randy, striking in look. Uh, in some of their cultures, the female is revered. It's it's held in, you know, yes, uh, yes. but some of, you know, striking with the Hindu kind of star in them, beautiful long hair, striking eyes. They don't look human, but they're very, very wise. And they have been watching for quite a while. And I get the impression from them that if they have a group of aliens that think they can do what the hell they like, or if they have a situation where the mind of the creator is abused in some way, they will only let that go on for so long. But that's at odds with allowing humanity to be at war with each other and them not intervening. Um, I'm utterly convinced that some intervention has gone on in terms of the current uh, climate that we see when that vision happened with the Nordic guy with the clocks it was at the height of the Ukraine crisis where it was all ramping mm. up uh, and then all of a sudden after that incident uh, Russia back down, backed it off the tension dropped um, so I, I, I there's some there's something going on where there is an investment in um, in humanity I would hasten to add there's a possibility that some of them are here among us 
and they're protecting their own. It could be something as simple as that, Randy, I'm not sure. I can't get to the bottom of why. Maybe it's not for me to know why for my own safety as well. You can know too much. Uh, and for that reason, sometimes it's best to keep quiet and just let people get on with things, I feel, because you can know too much for your own safety. Um, and so it's best that maybe I don't know the full reason why, uh, I do believe. Well, and I also think that, you know, I, this goes into a number of areas again, Tony, but one of them is that when I started this show back in 2009, I wrote a manifesto, and that manifesto was basically to make clear my stand on UFO abductees, contactees, and also vis-a-vis -vis how the media then, which nothing has changed, was handling UFOs. Um, no. What we've now seen is that it's gone from mocking and scoffing to uh, a form of uh, Hollywood glamorization of it on a low scale yes. that I think yes. is going to ramp up. Meanwhile, you know, some of the films that are made seem to express certain truths kind of veiled in plot lines. You mentioned yes, uh, several films. So it, it seems as though something wants to come out, and it seems, as we were talking earlier about the repercussions of an experience, just vibrationally how we resonate in our own field as a result of these experiences is in itself a communication. There is something that has changed in my lifetime, and I'm pretty sure in yours as well, in terms of overall some acceptance to the fact that the paranormal experiences that are had by people who are having these type of contacts is within the realm of acceptable human, I don't want to say conduct, whatever, but it is within the realm of not only possibility, but probability now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, what, so, the I things mean, we're talking about now would have gotten me checked back into the psychiatrist when I was a kid. Yes. You know, the kind of things that you just I'm not going to talk about that. Yes, yeah, no, 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 that, that is absolutely right. I think in Britain, uh, we're lucky, uh, but there's still every chance of a there's still every chance of a knock at the door, uh, you know, because of the stuff you're coming out with. But there again, it's a right to freedom expression, Randy. There's a right to uh, there's a right to express this. There's a right and a public duty uh, to put this in the public domain as well as a you know. Uh, I think the public need to know um, what is uh, what is actually going on. Uh, the MK Ultra stuff is an absolutely disgusting sideshow to it all. Uh, that is very disturbing, deeply troubling. Uh, I know, as I say, I think I've probably told you this before, when I was under surveillance all those years ago, and still am. I mean, it was quite unbelievable, the MK Ultra stuff that went on after this phone call uh, about a few days later. It's as if I was being targeted by Dr. Bloody Strangelove. It was, um, it was really, really bizarre, and it's disrespectful, utterly disrespectful. Um, and it, I just, well, I just suddenly realized, Randy, when I spoke at conferences in the early days, you know, I used to bang on about what they were doing to me and what they weren't doing to me, bang on and on about it. And then I suddenly realized I saw the energy in the room drop uh, and people just fidgeting and it wasn't quite coming across correctly. And then suddenly with guidance and feedback from a lot of support from people, I suddenly realized obviously that people want to know what's really going on, what what is really going on. And so, uh, you know, my talks now focus on not what they did to me, but rather on all the UFO stuff and what's actually going on. Um, uh, in my talk now, I'll only give them about a minute. I'll only cover it for about a minute over what they did. And what they did to me was pretty horrendous, uh, mm -hmm. Randy. I mean, you're talking three and four in the morning with MK Ultra, them, them kind of like waking you up and telling you how much salary they were on being followed, strange phone calls, gunfire, all this kind of thing back in the day when it was all going off. Strange helicopters filming you. You've no idea why. You know, there's a helicopter incident that happened to me. And a marked helicopter appears from nowhere filming me, um, all that kind of thing. Uh, you suddenly then reach a pivotal point when you suddenly realize that you have actually outgrown the people who have targeted you and it's them that are reaching for the drinks cabinet and you're twice the man, three times the man mm -hmm. and you're handling yeah, because yeah. they can't, 
yeah, and I never thought I'd get to that stage. I always thought I'd be the victim. And, and you know, as Dr. Stephen Greer says, love him or hate him, as he rightly said, uh, you are dealing with psychopaths. You are dealing with very unstable people who have access to technology that they shouldn't have, and it's an absolute blasted scandal. It's a scandal. It's disgusting, and it makes me bloody angry. Uh, but that's just me. But I never, I never thought I'd get to that stage where you evolve past them evolve past a guy who, who kind of targeted you or followed you in the pub or whatever you know i mean he, well you have to meant... believe too that the fact that you are targeted means there's something of value i mean well you, true you, you were not you were not taken out although no. being harassed obviously is not pleasant and i know people god love them i mean the type of day-to-day -day ti surveillance and harassment and electromagnetic interference is horrible and, yes. I, and my heart goes out to them, but they're not dead. Yes. And there's clearly a reason why they're targeted and why they're watched and why they are harassed so horribly. It's because something, something inside of them, something either they know or something that they are is of interest to a particular yes. agency or group of agencies. Yes, that's absolutely, that's absolutely correct. So what you've got, I suppose, in the scenario of the rock star guy, where he's got his team with him, um, whoever they are, promoting this, that dirty little secret is kept out the public domain. They're not, they're not wanting to go there. They won't want to go there. Well, they won't want to go there to the fact that some contactee experiences of UFOs are heavily targeted with mind control and MK Ultra. It's not glamorous. It's not One trendy. of my biggest criticisms of Corey Good, and a lot of people don't realize this, because I reached out to Corey Good back in 2015 as he was mm -hmm. starting to emerge. I had mm -hmm. actually followed the emergence of Corey Good, and you don't know this and you don't need to. But I want to mm -hmm. say this, that his initial stories were within the realm of believable. But mm -hmm. where, tra where this all transgressed was when it went into this mode of the savior programs coming from extraterrestrial entities that have deigned to look down their noses at mankind and tell us how we should conduct ourselves. Mm -hmm. I have a real problem with this. Because... Uh, from... Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's, a line, there's a line between the type of communication that you're receiving and the type of information that I would say avers towards creation of cults, which yes. I believe is what's really going on. There's a cult that's formed around certain UFO figures. And... Mm -hmm. As far as what is attempting to be merged now out of this current crop of disclosures, this is largely marketing. It's largely not designed to reveal much because, let's face it, I think you're the key that says, oh, gosh, they don't really have all of the data, do they? Because if they did, why would they need me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you, there's you the, and then there's you this curious thing that has to do with the bases and the presence of ETs in military bases. This is something that's reported. You are, I don't I have not heard from him in years, but Barry King talked about this when he was on the shows with me a couple of times. And I, I yes. think you know Barry King. Barry yes. King was in the underground bases. Yes. And uh, he reported some very disturbing things about certain races of ETs involvement with military. Those races yes. involvement with military look to me a lot like the dark side of the ET spectrum and the fact that largely this was some sort of dark symbiotic relationship for kind of a control grid over humanity. You, were, you Randy, have put that into words better than I could. Uh, that's precisely. Uh, you're an education to listen to. Actually, uh, you, you, you're you're a teacher as well as an interviewer. And listening to what you're saying, um, you precisely have got that correct. And then you've also got the other issue of uh, there are some very advanced spiritual uh, ETs out there who yeah. utterly detest that kind of thing. I've seen it from over 40 years of dealing with it. Uh, they 
utterly detest it. They're not happy about it uh, because this appears to be God's universe and the Supreme Architect's universe, and uh, it's not to be abused. It's not property to be um, abused, it would appear. Uh, and so, therefore, behind the scenes, you have a little kind of uh, war going on, a, a very big conflict of interest among these groups that the public uh, don't see. Um, they're certainly not turning up at the president's office and this. For example, uh, you know, in terms of all this, what will be concerning is, for example, the president, when he sleeps, he has no secret service protection. When he sleeps, uh, this is, he has, he's open. Uh, presidents, prime, world leaders, etc., uh, they're open to paranormal forces, and they're the people who are meant to be making decisions. Um, do you get what I'm saying? There are implications, aren't there? Uh, ethical, sure. moral yeah. implications um, to, to all that, because it happens in a time continuum. Uh, and that's of national security concern as well. Um, so but you've summed that up very eloquently. Well, I, and you know, it's interesting you would say that, because the more you go back and you look at history, we have, yeah. we have at least three or four U.S. presidents in the last century that yeah. have expressed, let's just say, a little bit more than a, a little exactly. interest in the matter. A lot of people don't yes. realize that Richard Nixon, for instance, was extremely interested yeah. in the UFO subject. John F. Yes. Kennedy allegedly had contact yes. and was prepared to disclose. Ronald Reagan was yes. a big believer in UFOs, as was yes. Jimmy Carter, who some have said also had some direct contact. So we have to assume that they, these beings, for better or worse, have access to our leaders and to pretty much anything that exists within our intelligence agencies as well. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would suggest that. I would suggest also that there are two uh, prominent um, world leaders at the moment who have been spoken to by them. Um, and I would suggest that it's a safer place in this world when we've got women leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something just, I don't know, but there's something going on where uh, uh, it seems that the women take the lead with these ET stuff. That it's the, the women that seem to take the lead, uh, I've seen, from what I've seen. Um, it's it's always been the theme. The, you know, this um, this guy now, I've forgotten his name in Russia, he sat down in front of some Prava journalists. He was a general. He, he was head of the KGB psychic spy agency, you know. Previn, Pravda, Previn, oh, I can't remember, Savin. Alexis Savin, head of the, he was put, putting, uh, he put me in contact, Joseph McMoneagle put me in contact okay. with him and said, oh, listen, this is, uh, sorry, say again, Andy. Yeah, yeah, no, Joe, Joe McGonagall, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Joe McGonagall, great guy. Um, he uh, said, listen, this is my KGB opposite number back in the day, uh, you know, this is the guy, have a look at him. Um, and he gave me his name. Uh, by irony, it would appear there's a small detail on the Russian uh, remote viewing website called New Cosmology. Uh, dot com that indicates that the Americans funded their remote viewing, but they kept it quiet to the tune of so many million, but that was all kept quiet as well. But what happened was, was this guy Savin sat down with some Russian journalists and said, my psychic uh, remote viewing team has had contact with an ET civilization. We accurately recorded the data. They would not give us any information to do with their military stuff. It was all medical related. What he said, what is fascinating, however, in terms of contact experiences, is the percentage uh, for contact with male ETs is low compared to percentage of contact with female ETs. So there is a higher percentage with me in my contact experiences of seeing female uh, than there is of seeing male. Uh, but this Nordic guy who's male well, is, seems to be around, uh, seems to be present, you know, uh, and it's 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 absolutely unbelievable. As a as a darkly comical and insane note, he even showed me that he showed me a vision of the car he drove. They have vehicles like we do. It's just wild. Um, it was just wild, Randy. Uh, but that was an, uh, that's just an insane, darkly comical moment that that <laughs> happened in the course of my experiences. Um, and so the thing is, with this great big juggernaut of a thing, I've got all my image analysis, I've got all, all my stuff, all this data, um, I've somehow got to get it into a book so that it's out there um, and, and somehow kind of like do the, do the best I can to get the book out there and get it all down, all this data down, because it's all history. It'll become history, a very unique history uh, of contact um, and the strange goings-on that have happened. I know for a fact that I think the... 
the Air Force, I get the impression that the, the RAF, uh, I get the impression the RAF may be getting radar contact um, over this town from them uh, because there's some, there's some kind of bizarre diplomatic channel of communication that they're wanting to open up. I don't know. There could be stuff going on, Randy, that is even more deeper than what I'm saying. Where you just, I, I just mm-hmm. don't know. But that appears to be where it's at, at the moment. Where it's at, at the moment is contact with ET, deeply spiritual, advanced scientific base, uh, indications of communication, indications of advanced aerodynamic uh, technology, um, and that they seem to be the key themes with me at the moment as to what's going on over the skies of Yorkshire. And, of course, communication uh, with key decision makers, I think, via space-time continuum environment, moving towards a disclosure agenda um, is also a distinct possibility. You wouldn't read that anywhere on the Internet, I don't think, uh, but that appears to be what is um, what is going on over the skies of my Yorkshire town with me and a few other people at the moment here in the UK as a contact experiencer. So what do you think that disclosure will look like? Is it going to be gradual? Is it going to be the kind kind of soft disclosure? Or maybe even more is that we're being psychologically prepared en masse for something that will be disclosure but will be, let's just say, subliminal in a sense, the preparation for this. It would be uh, very true, Randy. Yeah, you, you eloquently sum it up. But unfortunately, we have got the dirty little secret behind the scenes. Uh, we've got the dirty little secret regarding this. It's similar to, uh, akin to the metaphor of a used car salesman turning up. <laughs> it's uh, crazy we're going to uh, say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Turning up and saying, hey, up, governor, we've got this lovely UFO, advanced piece of kit. Would you like to have it free of charge? Just turn your back on what we're doing, if you wouldn't mind, sir. You can have that UFO, but just ignore what we're doing, if you wouldn't mind. We'll all go tickety-boo. It'll all be very nice. Thank you. And that about sums it up, I think. So while you've got that trucking on uh, behind the scenes, um, then disclosure is actually blocked. Disclosure isn't happening at all because you've got that going on be- behind the scenes, if I could eloquently sum that up. That is obviously, I've got enough to do. It's not my responsibility, all that, Randy, and it, I suppose it isn't your responsibility either. But as a human being, as an individual who's been at the sharp end, that is currently where it's at at the moment. Um, where it will evolve to in terms of disclosure is I think there's going to be uh, a liaison with one of the agencies uh, they will have a full-blown contact scenario going on where they will exchange information uh, via a classified project. And I think that we're talking about 100 years from now uh, whereby they will just grasp the fundamentals of, of their technology and understanding. I, um, I, do, uh, I do feel it's, it's fascinating, really, when you think about it, and darkly comical, um, really, but I can't live a normal life. Uh, because of all this, it's impossible to try and uh, to try and live a normal life. So I just try and do what I do what I do. But it's traumatizing. It can be shocking and disturbing. When I um, when I retire tonight to try and get some rest, I'll have yet again another restless night of constant mm. bombardment, um, constant carry on. Uh, you're a wanker. You're a tosser. Part of my language. You're this mind control going on. This, that, the other. From people who do not understand what the bloody hell is going on and appear to have access to technology that they shouldn't have. It's a high skates drama going on where the future of mankind is possibly at stake. Um, and you've got probably the galactic equivalent of Hawaii Five-O coming in. It's um, it's just <laughs> comical. You've got to smile. That's, that's you, actually you really hilarious. Think- Wow. It's hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. And it all started with a used car salesman, as far as I'm concerned. It all began with with a used car salesman turning up, I think, anyway, in my humble opinion. Um, so they're not termed, these guys on Tom's team or whatever team they're on with this disclosure thing and the, the alien stuff, they're not going to want that secret. They, they're just not going to gonna. – they just don't want to go there. And they don't want to go there with the – people have been targeted with mind control because that's the lunatic brigade is that isn't it we're the loon brigade um but i have got to make my stand randy uh i have got to stand my ground similar to the greeks at the battle of wherever it was with the shields and they had the persian empire coming down and you know i've got to 
I can't budge, I can't move, and I can't make it up. It would be dishonourable and disrespectful to say that any of it is made up. Uh, I am bothered. There's a small percentage of me that thinks, is this military technology being experimented on me? Is some sort of advanced artificial reality going on? But no, that doesn't make sense because the UFO footage analysis and the jets that go bombing in after them uh, means that there's something going on. There's clear mm -hmm. visual evidence that mm -hmm. there's, there's definitely something going on, and it's just trying to get to the bottom of that as well. Um, so I think I'm on. I've got to get on with the book. At popular demand. Everybody's telling me I must. Yeah, write you book. really do need to get the book out because I think you have a valuable perspective that can balance some of the sensationalism that's that's rife in this field yeah. right now. That that's right. There's just not. I don't know. I mean. I look at what's going on out there, but I'm not finding the quality of information coming, even from no. the experiencers right now. I think largely because they're traumatized, and a great yes. number of them either can't or simply do not want to communicate yeah. what's really been going on. Yes, you, you're right, Randy. And not only that, I mean, I had this guy from Mexico, eminent professor. For, I mean, I, I just can't remember his name, but he's written papers and he's wanting information. And, and, and the point being, what is the saddest part of all is I couldn't give him that information. But yet I'm the guy who's got them coming in over there, speaking all this. I couldn't give him that advanced information. And that's a shame. In fact, I find that tragic. Uh, that he was asking for information on quantum physics and this, that, because he sincerely believed, which is correct, that I'm having a contact scenario going on, but I couldn't give him any of that information, and nor have I got it either. And that, that, that really did upset me. I, I found it upsetting, frankly, that I'd been through all this but couldn't tell him anything. Um, and I, I find that upsetting in a way. Maybe I wouldn't understand it, I don't know, but it just is bizarre sometimes. It is truly bizarre what is going on sometimes when you when you're faced with all this uh dear well, i think really you is. know as well as i do that you can't dump everything that you know to one source yeah. having said yes. that the researchers out there also are learning or will learn that this is this is largely a matter of aggregating a lot of data across a very wide data field that yes I've been researching this stuff since I was a kid. I've been doing it on the air for nearly 10 years. And I can tell you that I don't deign to know all of anything. The more I learn, the more perplexed I become, and the more intrigued I become, and the scareder I become. That's, the, that's really the horrible aspect of it. It's actually this weird kind of commingling of excitement, fear, and, and just the drama of... of you you can't escape it. It's, there's, there's there's a gravity to yep. it that pulls you in. Yes. No. You 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 know you 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 cannot escape it. And I think there are prominent personalities within the media, within the political landscape, who have had contact experiences. Absolutely. Um, and they're keeping it quiet. Yeah, I do. They're, they're just keep. Yeah, I I do believe so. I have one more uh, line of questioning for you. It may or may not go anywhere. There has been heightened. Um news over the last several years, certainly since the time we last spoke, about Antarctica, and I'm wondering if you have any information regarding Antarctica, Ant Antarctica, why can't I say this word, Antarctica, and what's going on with uh, UFOs and potentially other things down there? Well, I had reason to suspect uh, a few years ago that some of the UFOs coming in over my house were from there. Um, I had reason to suspect it. I had reason to suspect uh, the bizarre behavior of the UFOs, whereby one UFO would turn up, but two UFOs would turn up to shoo the other one away. This was in the early days, and I'm thinking to myself, that's very odd behavior. The two, one UFO turns up, small dot of light, but two different type of light UFOs turn up to shoo it away. Um, the other scenario is a uh, UFO turns up, um, flies over, uh, another UFO turns up, flies over me, but then another UFO turns up chasing after them. Um, there's something going on that is possibly connected to that region um, or connected to something else, uh, and I, I'd reason to suspect a long time ago that that's where they were coming from, um, because you see at the end of the day, um, the rumor mill reports, and I only hear this rumor, uh, that Antarctica is the unacknowledged national state. Antarctica is the unacknowledged country. It's the mm -hmm. unacknowledged... Uh, yeah. it's, uh, and therefore, 
that piece of the jigsaw would also block disclosure as well. Uh, if you had that overriding scientific base from World War II still active and quietly accepted as a nation state, but the secret is never told, that could be a block to disclosure in, in, in my humble opinion. Very There's a situation as well of portals over Antarctica, but mm -hmm. I'm not clear yep. on it, Randy. I'm, I'm not clear. Well, some have said that um, things don't make sense, that ex expeditions that have occurred down there, even going back into the early 20th century, seem to indicate that there was something down there that didn't conform to our present understanding of the Earth itself, that there may actually be more land there than would be likely under our current scenario, if you catch what I'm yes. saying, that yes. we're uh, either I've talking just... about an extension of a landmass or we're talking about a place that goes off into another realm, another dimension, uh, something yeah. going on there. Yes, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, I, I concur with that. There's a possibility that some of the ET groups that we see are certainly not from other planets, but are from that region. Um, it's and been they my look suspicion, like brother. <laughs> yeah, it's been my suspicion. The fact of the matter is that I don't know whether you know about this, but the United Kingdom, even before Operation High Jump, was involved in hunting uh, strange going on in Antarctica under something called Operation Tabalan. Um, Operation Tamalan uh, was a special boat squadron operation due to the fact that a marine platoon had been mysteriously done in uh, in that region. They, according to the witness who was uh, who gave his testimony um, and didn't change it for ten years, he was interviewed ten years later. It still hadn't changed. According to the witness, he was asked to go to the Falkland Islands where they were practicing. Um, Arctic combat conditions and then they went to Antarctica to hunt what could only be described as the polar men um, and he describes this incredible incident where his unit come under attack by these polar men uh, and how they uh, gave fire um, and how they uh, repelled them back and the fact that he'd seen strange bases there even before the Americans got there with, with Operation High Jump there is something going on, the UFO phenomena. These UFOs are connected somehow to um, to that region as well. I, I don't think there's any getting away from that. Um, I really don't. Hmm. That is so interesting. Brother, you know, yeah, yeah, operation. I'm looking I'll at the it, clock. Yeah, we're, we're running out of our time here a bit. Uh, All right. Um, this has been beyond interesting and fun, Tony. It's been too long. Thank now. you. Um, Thank you. Let people know anything you want to know going out, you know, mention your website, any projects you're involved with, or just simply yeah. that um, how or where they can find you. Okay, yeah, well, they can they can find me on my website, tonytopping.wordpress.com. You can certainly find me on YouTube. If you're media and broadcasting, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, where you can find me there as well. Um, I've got uh, possibly two TV projects going on, uh, one of which is, is going to be absolutely fascinating because I think we're going to uh, do the flying machines again. We're going to reconfigure some ancient flying machines nice. as the concept. Nice, nice. Yeah, we think, think we'll do that. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased that the fact that I've got kind of um, TV people, I, I like that kind of thing. I've worked in that environment. I just like it, Randy. It's just, a, it's just nice to do, just do a bit of stuff in front of the camera. So uh, there's that going on. But, of course, the main thing is to get the book written, I think. So we'll... Yeah. We'll have to track on with that. Uh, I'm thinking of doing a visual book as well, like a book where all my photos and image analysis is put in one book. Don't know what you think of that, but I'm thinking of doing one. I of think it, like it's an photo. awesome idea, man. I, I, cause yeah, I think a lot of what you talk. I think a lot of what you talk about is very visual. Even when you're we're sharing these words, there's a lot of mm -hmm. mind pictures being transmitted. I don't know if you know this, but I feel really connected to you when we talk. And mm. I get lots of little impressions and things from you that are very interesting. 
I think people know a bullshitter when they know one, don't they? And that's that's been the key to my success, Randy, because I'm I'm actually recalling events that have actually happened, yeah. um, and I think that's that, that's a good thing. But listen, you you've been a a teacher to me this evening. I've been listening to you. Oh Some word. of the things you've come out with have been a tremendous uh, teaching experience for me. I I get you know I've learned some things, and that's a good thing. Uh, always nice when you can do an interview and it works both ways, and we go away with a you know with a nice impression and uh, yeah. people have learnt and it's wonderful really nice thank you so much i am so blessed to have talked to you again tony let's not make it so long keep in touch with me and uh thanks again for coming on it was a fantastic interview that's going to wrap it up for this time this is off planet radio it kind of feels old school doesn't it it's been fun our guest tony topping and uh, we'll be back with another show real soon the truth is out there it's inside you now go look for it You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com.